Well, hello, friends. Hi, I am Bishop Jerry Hayes. I am the Abbot General of the Apostolic Disciples of the Way, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Bible verse by verse. In our episode presently, we're going to look at John chapter 2, and we're going to begin at verse 1. In our last episode, I introduced the first 11 verses. Now we're going into those verses one clause at a time, one phrase at a time. Before we do, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would illumine all in us that is darkness today. Help us to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So here, beloved, we're going to go right into our study today. We do want you to visit our information box below, but I'll be making uh, more comments concerning that at the very end of this episode. So in our last episode, be sure to watch that one. Uh, we introduced these first 11 verses of chapter 2, and here we're going to go into them verse by verse. In uh, verse 1, we're introduced to a marriage. Now, it's significant that a wedding would be chosen for the public debut of Jesus' ministry, given the bridegroom and the bride theme of the entire New Testament. Now, this is manifested in the following way. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a marriage, Matthew chapter 22. The church age is said to be a time of betrothal, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. And the consummation of the ages is also said to be a marriage, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. So this introduction of the marriage here is very apropos. Now let me say a word about Cana this little town. Now, Cana is west of the Sea of Galilee, yet north of Nazareth. It's mentioned only once by the evangelist and is unknown in the Old Testament unless it is the Cana of Joshua chapter 19 and verse 28. And some think that it's probable that it is. And we have the mother of Jesus in this first verse. The evangelist never gives her name, which is Mary, just as he does not give his own name. Now, the absence of any reference to Joseph throughout the early ministry of Christ is an indication of his death early in the life of Jesus. Also, Lending itself to this conclusion is the fact that Jesus remained within the family unit until about age 30. Now, it is assumed this was true because he cared for his earthly family, his mother, his brothers, and his sisters, until one of his brothers was able to take his place as the breadwinner of the family. Now, the cause of the deaths of both Joseph and the parents of John the Baptist could have been their advanced years, or, not considered by most, the activity of the Roman army in that area could have been the cause. Now, we know that there was much unrest among the Jews, and, and the Romans carried out uh, severe reprisals in these very areas. One need only see the history of Sipporah, while only three miles north of Nazareth and a major metropolis, it's not even mentioned in the New Testament. And this might be a new word to you, Sipporah. You may not have ever heard of this town, They're actually a city. So I will try to introduce it here. Sipporah was uh, a city just three miles north of Nazareth. 
Now, during the time of Jesus' early life, it was under major reconstruction from having been earlier destroyed because of a revolt against the Romans. Now, it's very likely that Jesus accompanied, accompanied his father, his stepfather Joseph there for work since they both were carpenters. And the word used for carpenter for Jesus is the same word used for masons. So no doubt they worked in masonry as well. Now, although the city was loyal to Rome, for the most part, it had its moments of unrest. Some historians think that Joseph may have been killed in Sepphoris, either from a work accident or, or by the Roman authorities. So that's just a little introduction there. We move on to verse 3. Verse 3 talks about wine. And it's the Greek word oinos. And it is Strong's Greek number 3631. Oinos is the Greek for the Hebrew original yayin. And that's Strong's Hebrew number 3196. And that is fermented wine. It implies intoxication from a root word that means uh, ephorus. So we know then that the water that Jesus turned into wine was oinas, which is the same as yayin, which is fermented wine. They were having a party. Do you think everybody was going to overdrink grape juice, unfermented at a party when they could have wine? I don't really think so. Now let's go to verse 4. Jesus references his mother as woman here. Uh, now while this is a polite address to women, it is not a common address to one's mother. And we need to look at uh, chapter 19 and verse 26, where Jesus again employs this address from the cross when he calls his mother woman. This address of woman for his mother was surely to show his, dis his detachment from familiar uh, origins and his total devotion to a greater and a higher cause. Now some say that woman was a uh, common reference uh, to reference a female in these days, but it would not have been common for a son to reference his mother that way. And then Jesus says to her, what have I to do with thee? Well, uh, this is a common expression in Scripture, and it's used in one of two ways, either in hostility, what have I to do with you? Uh, Judges 11, uh, verse uh, 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 21, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 18, or, or just simply a denial of common interest. What have I to do with thee? Or, or what have I to do with that? How is that my business? How is that my concern? And we see this in Hosea chapter 14 and verse 9, 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 13. It is noted that demons said it of Jesus in Mark chapter 1, verse 24, and chapter 5 and verse 7. Jesus said, what have I to do with thee? And then he said, mine hour is not yet come. So my hour. Now this has reference to his time of glorification. Namely, his passion and his resurrection. His time to die and to be resurrected and to ascend. Jesus says, that hour's not yet. He knew it was coming, but he knew it was not yet. Matthew chapter 26, 45. 
Mark chapter 14 and verse 41 and other passages. He said, is not come. My hour is not come. Now, this fourth gospel has similar statements at chapter 7 and verse 6 and verse 8 and verse 30 and chapter 8 and verse 20. However, there was the knowledge that once this miracle was done, there would be no stopping the fame of Jesus from spreading throughout Galilee and even to Jerusalem. And once it started, there would be no stopping it. Uh, I cannot help but see something of the humanity of Christ here because he knows where this is going to end. He knows his hour is coming. And his human self was not eager to start down that road. So here we see Mary, his mother, actually pushing him forward into his ministry. Then in, chapter, in verse 5, she turns to the servants and says, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. In other words, she had told Jesus they didn't have any wine. He said, What's, how's that my business? And then uh, she turns to the servants and says, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Did it sound like that she was put off by his, by his uh, uh, hesitancy to respond to her? Does it sound like that there was even in a hiccup there? No. Mothers are often like that. Mary's authority at the wedding is front and center here. It, it can't be ignored. It's just a, a glaring fact. Now, it is thought by some that because of the authority she demonstrated and because of her concern over the lack of wine, now, it was considered a disgrace for a family to run out of wine at a wedding feast, and, and Mary was concerned. Now, it's thought that because of her concern for the potential disgrace of not having enough wine for the wedding, that this was the wedding of one of Jesus' brothers, perhaps James, the oldest brother. Now, this is more likely than not, because Jesus and his disciples made haste to be there, being in Jerusalem just three days before the wedding and arrived just in time. Now, the wedding in Cana has all the earmarkings of uh, an uh, immediate family event. However, Jesus, knowing his ministry would take him to a lonely death, as an enemy of the state, balked at beginning that journey. His mother, however, literally thrust him headlong onto his path of destiny. And there we're going to stop. And we'll pick up verse 6 when we come back. Beloved, let me draw your attention to our information box below. Please like, share, and uh, in our lower right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see our ministry emblem. If you'll hover over that, it'll give you an opportunity to subscribe to our channel. We need likes, we need shares, we need subscriptions to raise our content on the algorithms of the World Wide Web so more people can have access to this teaching. Have you ever heard the things that you are hearing here? Probably not. Oh, generally, yes. But I mean the details of the things that we are sharing. And if you have enjoyed that, and if it's enhancing your Bible knowledge, and if it's enhancing your relationship with the God of the Bible, then wouldn't you like to come along beside us to be supporters by liking everything that you see by sharing it, uh, by subscribing, and also by supporting 
monetarily if God has so blessed you? I pray that you do. The Lord bless you and sanctify you wholly in your mind, in your body, and also in your spirit. And until we are together again, beloved, Godspeed.